Thank you for listening to The Business Fear. Don't forget to subscribe and share this episode. My guest today is Coach Karen Eldad. Karen founded with Enthusiasm Coaching, where she helps professionals and entrepreneurs achieve business goals and personal development. Thanks for joining me today, Karen. Thank you for matching my level of enthusiasm, John. It's a real joy to be here. Well, that's how you should always take on life, right? Every single minute of the day should be the best life you should be living. So thank you. I really want to thank you for the time that we're going to have today. And this is going to be a lot of fun. But before we start, if you don't mind sharing with the listeners a little bit about yourself, how you became who you are today, and what's your kind of expertise and authority figure, um, what people know you by today. My life has ended up where it is today through collapse. I got really lucky, John, about 10 years ago, pretty much everything I was using to define myself, the big fancy job, the big fancy marriage, the nice house, all of it collapsed. And uh, as I lost one thing after the other, and to be very honest, as I walked away from one thing after the other, I started facing a big shit storm and really had to ask the questions that I'd probably been avoiding most of my life, like, what do I actually want to do? Who am I really? What lights me up inside? What would I like to do with the rest of my life? These are very typical questions for a midlife crisis, and I'm glad I went through it 10 years before the midlife age kicked in. And that's because I I answered them almost preemptively, and that's allowed me to live a pretty solid life now. Before this, I was chasing prestige and status like most people have been most of their lives, whether they're aware of it or not. Went to the right schools, married the right person, and the right is in quotation marks, of course, like what you're expected to marry. Um, Had the right kind of job at the right kind of organization, big, safe, prestigious organizations, and really didn't understand why I was so burnt out and so unmotivated. Most of the time, it's like a low grade anxiety, depression kind of situation where you really have no reason to be suffering. Overtly speaking, the world can probably not see why you're not feeling very happy, but it was because the choices I made were antithetical to my soul. And so one day, as I walked away from what was really an abusive marriage, if you saw it from the outside, it looked good on Instagram, but was an abusive, emotionally and physically abusive marriage. As I walked away from it, I started to reach for the unthinkable, which was coaching and self-help books and personal development books. You're sitting right now in front of at least a dozen books that changed my life, completely changed my life. And uh, that was that was the beginning of the transformation, John. That's when I started to really change profoundly how I thought, which changed my mindset, which changed my chain of reactions. and. Not only did it set me on this path of deciding to become a coach and helping other people to do this, it just made me a happy person. And this is great because um, all, for all the listeners who don't know who you are, it's, it resonates with a lot of people because um, if you are working nine to five, you're working in the rat race or you're a business owner and you're an entrepreneur and you're struggling to figure out what's the reason you're doing what you're doing. You wake up every morning for that struggle and it's hard to get up motivated, happy, enjoying the process and learning and growing. Make sure that you're doing everything because you really want to really focus on like why you're doing what you're doing. So when, and I know that you, you mentioned some of these big milestones and big things that happen throughout your life. Take, take us a little bit beforehand on, you know, the journey of going to prestigious school, taking on that profile job, uh, because, you know, people perceive from the outside the dream of glossy magazine covers, you know, TV superstardom, nice fancy homes, nice cars. But what was it that didn't live up to the expectations? What, what really went on? Because, you know, again, for all the listeners that that's what the goal is. They, they see all these, you know, nice cars, nice trips, 
you know, if, if you don't mind sharing, that would be great. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you could have seen that. And back in the day, I think you would have seen me partying with rock stars on Instagram, wearing very, very fabulous clothes, which I don't mind telling your listeners. I still enjoy very much. And the tall husband who was constantly dressed to match my outfits. So you could see that everything was working out for me, but what you weren't seeing was what you're not seeing in the case of most overachievers. And I coach overachievers. I have coached more than 600 individuals who definitely have achieved success above and beyond the norm and consistently do so. What you're not seeing is anxiety, constantly looking over my shoulder for where the, the, the bottom's gonna drop, where the other shoe's gonna drop. I was always worried about what other people thought of me. So I was living in constant, trying to keep up with the Joneses mode, which is awful. And by the way, economically terrible for you. And I think more than anything, the easiest way to describe this to anyone who's feeling a certain malaise, knows that their life is not as good as it looks on Instagram, What's really going on, I think, is we have become doing creatures. We've become human doings. We go to work, we come back from work. We go to work, we come back from work. We pursue one achievement, we get it, doesn't feel that good, we pursue the next high. Instead of being spiritual beings, we are spiritual beings having a physical experience and we seem to have forgotten that. And that's what the book started to do for me, what eventually coaching did for me was it kind of really changed the ratio. There's a book behind you that says 80-20 sales and marketing, Pareto principle, obviously. Well, if the Pareto principle, 20% of our effort yields 80% of the results, then for crying out loud, we have got to start focusing on the spiritual backbone that sustains us, feeds us emotionally and makes us happy rather than the 15 bucks at the end of the month that get you the stuff that will make you maybe, maybe, 5% feeling better for a very short period of time. When we flip the switch on this, we start living a very different, very rich life. And that's, that's what was really going on behind the scenes. And that's what I've truly managed so far. Nothing is forever so far to reverse. That's amazing to hear. Um, And I would love to ask you a little bit, you know, of these questions where, you know, you realize and you kind of broke everything off. Um, you know, some of the bad um, habits and some of the bad structures and, you know, marriage and job and whatnot, you started consuming, you started reading, were there people instrumental in your life that you gravitated towards that were more like coaches, mentors, people that you um, saw a different side of things? Because when you're living this exaggerate like this glorious life on paper from visual from the outside everyone would love to be like you but inside you're like rotting or you're not feeling well right how did you get across like how do you find how how did you navigate through all this and find people that were similar to you because i'm sure it's all about community it's all about that network right and what did you do to overcome that Well, I had to find that community. What I said before was my whole life collapsed. And I mean, my whole life collapsed within a very short period of time. I don't, I, the divorce was contentious. I lost all my money and also realized that technically we had no money. That's another one of the fun realizations you discover in a contentious divorce. And, um, I ended up leaving my job because I wanted to go back to the United States. I was living in Switzerland and then I couldn't find a job for many months. So you want to marry broke with six months plus of unemployment, and you've got yourself a serious problem. In short order, some other catastrophes befell me. The few things I got to keep after the divorce were burned in a fire. There was a a, a fire in my storage unit. And my two cats who were my constant companions, and I don't have children, the only companions I had also died within a month of each other. So I'm having a really, really tough time. It went from all right, I need the books to try to help me navigate a difficult transition to I'm at rock bottom here. And when I was at rock bottom, I decided to do the unthinkable. I gave myself, are you ready for this? A break. Unlike most overachievers who move into hyperdrive and do more and call 50 LinkedIn contacts and go completely bananas, I withdrew. I decided this was the time to think. This was the time to understand what had happened. This was the time to really make sense of my moves previously and why they got my the results they got me. 
and reframe my thinking in order to get vastly different results. And it was the smartest thing I ever did. That's also when I, I took the very big financial risk of hiring coaches, coaching, especially world-class coaching is not cheap. This isn't, I know a lot of people think of therapy as expensive. Coaching is a short burst of, of, of inspiration. And it usually, if you're working with a master, it's not a cheap endeavor. I forked over the sums for Jen Sincero, who wrote You're a Badass, You're a Badass at Making Money, the entire Badass series, because she was freaking hilarious. And I just thought I connect with her because of her humor. And Catherine Alice, who's another coach uh, who works with the healing of the heart. And um, I went to Kabbalah classes. I really reached for a very wide breadth of spiritual uh, programming again for an, an Ivy leaguer. This is unthinkable. Like I really used to make fun of people who did this, but within a year, my thinking was transformed. My financial situation was transformed. I was back in action. I felt like myself again. And this time I was in a completely different mode because I knew when to say no, I knew what was not for me. I was not chasing the approval of others anymore, which was a transformation for me. And everything really started to change. And this is essentially when I begin to build my own business. And I know this podcast is about building your own business, but the fundamental thing I want to say to people is I built businesses before they failed. The main difference in the reason with enthusiasm, coaching has become a huge, a seven figure success within five years, which I think after five years, you can start really feeling comfortable with saying you're successful is because of that transformation. It was because of the radical change in the way I thought. I was no longer bringing a hustler to the table. I was bringing a person who was relaxed and who knew that they were doing what they love to the table. And that's the game changer. And that's amazing. Five years, that transformation and self-realization to come to realize what really is important. What are your values and what do you ultimately want? Goal setting, making sure that you have people in place that are in alignment with what you want to achieve, right? And coaches, mentors, people that can understand what you're feeling, that have kind of gone through it and, and have experience, right? Different perspectives, understanding because you're jaded with your own experiences. And you feel like no one knows what's going on. No one appreciates or can feel what you went through. But there are thousands of people going through the exact same challenges that you are. You just have to go out there and seek them out. You just got to go find them. And so that's why, you know, coaching and mentoring, I've really gone a different route. Like I kind of didn't do coaching and mentoring. I'm more of a self-help kind of you know, gung-ho kind of person, spirituality for me has been all about meditation and just being very, very present, slow down, don't compare, you know, mm -hmm. and it's all about not chasing, being happy and contentful, being grateful, because understanding that we're so fortunate in the Western society and world to have choice, abundance, yeah. and access, where 95, 99% of the world is on bare necessity needs, right? So don't compare to people ahead of you, compare to other people that are below you. And you're going to be far happier in that sense. Well, you're so you're, you're onto three different things, John. The first is to have the humility to reach for any of the work, whether you can hire a coach or mentor, uh, or work with a mentor, or you can really start consuming 400 of the books and really make this a lifestyle. It's a spiritual lifestyle, right? Um, you have to first have the humility to say, the truth is not everything is okay. I don't got this. I could use some help. And for most overachievers, this is very hard to do, to look around and to say, well, I got this money and I'm doing kind of okay. And I am technically married. Doesn't matter. We haven't had sex in like the last year. I'm definitely fine. You're not fine. It's okay to ask for help. It will change your life. Why live out the rest of your days okay or even doing well when you can have fabulous? The second thing you're saying is, you're, I think, really describing for people what happiness is. John and I have bubbly behavioral styles. We look very, very happy. But that's not what happiness really consists of. It's acceptance and gratitude. Acceptance and gratitude. And if you really start to move in a place that's truly always looking at the advantage of where you are, 
the luckiness to be where you are, the luckiness of still having time ahead. You will be in a deep reverence for life. That is what allows you to have the resilience. Behind you is Angela Duckworth's book, Grit, the resilience, the courage to run a business long term. Amazing. I mean, these things that you're talking resonate with me. And that's why you're on the show, by the way, Karen. I love it. So, yeah, I what, you. I feel you. <laughs> so what are some of the things that you've transformed? Because you've been running your business for five years now or yeah. plus. And early days, I would love that journey, right? Yeah. Of how did you get started knowing that this is something you wanted to do? Yeah. And how did that come about? Because usually the first couple of years are a struggle. They're hard. Yes. And people who see you now think it's an overnight success. They can do it they in do. six months, right? They, but you got to put in that time. Yeah, you got to put in time. You got to yes. put in that grit. You got to put in a hard work, dedication. And these are sleepless nights and stress and things that everyone, like no one really realizes until you're in it, Right. So if you don't mind sharing uh, a little bit about that journey. The three, the two things that transformed my life, two things transformed my life, my business and my relationship. I am remarried. I have married the Congrats. most wonderful human being on the planet. Honestly, the most decent, kindest, relaxed, happiest, most generous person on the planet. And that is what you're looking for. If you are out there and you're single, forget any of the accoutrements. Look for kind, decent, loving, supportive per person. And that's what you're looking for, by the way, in a coach as well. Somebody who's been through it and somebody who's got your back. And there's no substitute for that. The second is a business that has my back and a business that feels absolutely good to me, that is kind and decent and generous. So two identical structures in love and in business. And I love talking about this, John, because coaches are seldom asked about how you built your business, right? We're, we're asked about mindset. We're asked about all of the accoutrements that people can use. But I'm going to talk to you right now about the business of coaching. There are, I think, according to the BLS, uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, numbers of the last two years, we've gone from a country that was 34% side hustle to over 50% side hustle. This means there are a lot of consultants out there, a lot of freelancers out there. And guess what? You are in our industry now, in John and my industry, in the service industry. And in the service industry, I like to say there are three phases of the business. You ready? Let's Number go. One phase, imagination. All of it is happening in the head. And people disqualify this because nothing is really moving. The study, the work on yourself, the reading the books, the talking to other people, the ideation process, the writing and journaling, the, the visualizing the greatness of it, the seeing other examples and being awakened by their example of people who are doing what you want to do. That is 30% of the equation. Yes, it's an enormous chunk of the puzzle. So that moment that I was talking about, that year essentially, where I went inward and did study and practice and thinking and really started to reflect upon my purpose, I'm giving a purpose workshop today, really started to think about who I am and what I want, 30% of the equation is in that moment. You think nothing is happening, but the whole world is changing in those moments. And the more you feed yourself books and coaching of strength, the mindset of resilience, the passion, the understanding of where you're going, the better off you're going to be, right? Because it's like setting a GPS system. If you don't know where you're going to go, trust me, you're not going there. Number two, the hedging your bets phase. Most people, John, when they start a consulting business are not independently wealthy. I know, shocking, but true. Most of us, and by the way, I also, I always believe when you have a rich spouse, or you're, you've inherited money, you're at an incredible disadvantage because you're much less likely to be hungry and you're, much, you're gonna be much slower to go to market to really earn the money. People like me, broke, very big advantage. Guess why? Because you actually need the money. And that also makes you very uh, much more cautious and calculated in your moves. Not too calculated, I wasn't risk averse and I wasn't not starting a business, but I was gonna do this pragmatically. I had to make money, spend money, make money, spend money. I could not spend what I did not have. And so there were two things that I did in that era. The first year and a half of my business, after launching the business, 
which by the way, was successful from the onset. I sold out every possible slot that I had in coaching from the beginning and the referrals started to move very quickly. But the only thing I didn't tell you was that I also had a full-time job at that time. This is called hedging your bets. So I went to work, worked until six o'clock, came home, took a coaching session, worked on the weekends, wrote on the weekends, prepared my programming on the weekends, seated talks when I could on a day that I had to take off in order to give a talk, invited colleagues to my talks, involved them in what I was building and doing. This allowed me to steady the ship. Every time I needed to film a video series or do a photo shoot, I had money because I was earning money at my day job and then I was applying it forward. And then, of course, with time, you level the playing field. You have enough coaching business to just let go of the anchor. And that's when the business really takes off. This was in June of 2018. I launched in January of 2017. June of 2018, I quit my day job. And I'm happy to tell you, John, I never looked back. The rest of it was just a nice, steep scaling. I now uh, work with three people on my team, and it's just it's a new world out there. It's amazing. That's so fun to hear. And, you know, you telling the story of bootstrapping side hustle. Yeah. Right. And being in this position, because for all the listeners that have been listening to my show, I come from my parents came from Vietnam and they didn't have we lived in like government housing. We didn't have That's education, true. like all this stuff that people are born with like next generation kind of passing on some funds, some resources, accesses, learnings about how things work. We didn't know how to navigate. You had to figure it out. So when you're able to struggle, learn, put in an extra time and always have security, like you mentioned job and do a little side hustle and make sure that, you know, there is something there because you you're selling out or there's enough income to support the, the lifestyle that you want to choose. Right. And then you can double down. These are things that a lot of business people don't really talk about. Right. And this whole world that we're living in where, you know, this technology, you know, boom on crypto NFTs and then angel investing and this, you know, dragon's den or whatever, all these, you know, all these shows, shark tank, they're all trying to, capture your attention on how easy it is to start a business, right? Oh, you need funding, you, yeah. you know, you, you get funding and you don't have to worry because you're set. They don't realize how many of those people fail, right? Because they don't talk to people that are successful already. Like you need X amount of revenue to support it, to get on the show. Like all these things are challenging, but in the world we're living to today, it's real time. People want information and success immediately. Yeah. And even for yourself, they're probably looking at you now saying, wow, I can you know, yeah, I can do that easy. Yeah. And by the way, look at the coaching industry. The coaching industry has absolutely exploded. It's why I'm going to do a series called coaches on zoom, getting coffee that launches next month and TM. And that it's really awesome because I want to give people a glimpse of this industry. I think a lot of people see me, especially at this juncture, right? It's been five years, five and a half years now and think, I could do that. And that looks pretty simple. And, and what they do is they copy material and they start to move out into the universe. Now, look, uh, uh, no discredits to anyone. They, they don't get proper accreditation. They, for some reason, have made it seem OK to say that accreditation is not important. It is. You're dealing with people's mental health and livelihoods. Accreditation and ethics matter enormously. And the shortcuts do not ultimately serve you. I think what John and I are having as a conversation for the listeners that I think is super important, right, John, is to say, it's not easy, but if you love it enough and you're passionate enough, you will not cut corners. Warren Buffett always says, time is the friend of the long-term business and the enemy of the short-term business. You only blow yourself up when you're thinking short-term, when you're playing a short game, when you're hustling to win or close a gap. This is a long game. You should expect it to involve hard work, and tenacity and that's the only way to the other side and and you mentioned warren buffett he didn't start earning a good no. living until he was 60 yeah. after doing it for 20 or 30 years yeah. and this applies for every professional 
expert business owner that sees some sort of success. They put in their time, they put the skill, labor, they understand the art, there's failure, there's ups and downs, they have self-realization. But no one talks about those 10, 20, 30 years of grinding it out, right? They expect, wow, someone's 30 or 40. You know, I want to be like them. Nope. They don't want to put in the time and effort, right? So they read a book, they go to a course, they join a community, they get some coaching and they realize, wow, this isn't, you know, <laughs> for them, like they have to realize you got to put in the time and that could be volunteering, learning about the business, go out there and get dirty, go out there and learn as much as you can, because there's so much to it in terms of running a business, even the, the transformation in the last five years, when you're a solopreneur side hustler to then running it yourself, to then hiring people, operations, systems, processes, planning, all that takes time. Yes. Right. And it depends on what your goals are ultimately. But if you're happy with what you have, then you can sustain it. But if you're looking at scaling and growth and having better, bigger visions, then there's different levels of where you're at and there's people that have already gone through it and you can kind of tap on their doors to see if they can assist you. I agree with you. If you just want to hustle, it doesn't particularly matter. And you just want to get rich or really want us to acquire a certain status or look a certain way. But if you are very serious about your endeavor, being the best SEO expert on the planet does matter. Being the best coach you can be does matter. It's exactly the same approach I took in love. Take time to invest in yourself. Take time to get yourself together. Take time to be the person who is worthy of the marriage of your dreams and really line up with that person. It's exactly the same in business. Take the time to be the superstar you know yourself to be. Do not cut the corners. And don't worry, unlike Warren Buffett, for most of us, it will not take 40 years of investment, 30 years. And, and I think for some people their mindset is so tight, it'll be a very quick turnaround and long sustainable results. But if you really are playing the long game, realize that you came here for the journey, man. You did not came here for the success, which is very short, very fleeting, and doesn't excite most of us long-term. And you're not to be deterred by failure, which as Oprah says, is just redirection. It's okay. You will live to fight another day. So we are all playing the long game here. And that is the ultimate secret to building a business that rocks. And understanding to slow down because there's all these, you know, ways to get rich, ways to grow and scale and grow faster, quicker, cheaper, whatever it is, right? Just stay grounded with your path because there's always this shiny object syndrome. There's always something that's going to capture your attention and this algorithm that, you know, the internet providers you know, this is a different story. Psychologically, they're trying to deceive you and try to motivate different actions, right? So you have to really understand the root of their business to then figure out what makes sense for your business and who you really want to cater towards and what kind of provide service uh, pricing, whatever. There's so many variables, right? And life will be happier when you're closer and you're on this path of clarity that journey. And yes, there's going to be a lot of mistakes that you're going to go through. And it's more about how do you overcome them? How do you take on those mistakes, rejection, regret, I would have, could have, should have to make it a positive spin? Because people are very down on themselves when they things are. happen. They go into this rabbit hole of depression, they go, you know, therapists, and they, they try to find quick ways around it. Look on the bright side. Yeah. You know, but it's very hard to say that to somebody who is down on themselves. What I can say instead, if it's all right, John, is what yeah. you're saying is the fastest way to get anywhere is slowly. This yeah. is an absolute truth. The fastest way to get anywhere is slowly. But an equal truth is be easy on yourself because you are doing much better than you think. I volunteered on a suicide hotline for many years, crisis text line, which is still the biggest um, hotline in the country. And be easy on yourself is probably the message I repeated most frequently with the mostly very young people who were on the line. We lose perspective in moments that look to us like we're not measuring up, we can't get ahead. But these moments come to us all. 
They are part of the universal experience of going for anything worthwhile in life. The best thing you can do is be easy on yourself and recognize that you are doing much better than you think. Isn't that that's, true? That's amazing words because, you know, mentally people have to realize that life is this huge, long journey of people, interactions, relationships, experiences, and things go on. There's a lot of information thrown at you and you're going to compare, you're going to try to figure it out, but we're human creatures that can distinguish, sort things out, figure things out. And yes, we are creatures of habit as well. So you need to figure out who are stronger, who, like, how do you become that strong person, that human that can overcome these challenges, these situations? Um, and if you have people that love you unconditionally, your parents, your friends, family, whatever it is, community, coaches, mentors, these are people that you should be reaching out to because they can bring a different perspective in the situation that is going through that you're going through. And it's hard, right? To, to self-realize when you're at a young age, because they haven't lived much, right? Like someone in their teenage years versus someone that isn't in their twenties or thirties or forties, life goes on, life experiences go on. And so don't, don't put so much stress in, on yourself. Like everyone's very self detrimental sometimes when they're pressuring, trying to chase and trying to compare to others that why, like, you know, I, I kind of realized that early days and I'm very fortunate in that sense, but a lot of people struggle for that. They do, but you're sitting in front of one of the best books for that. And that's mindset by Carol Dweck mindset really posits that there are two types of mindset, the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. The fixed mindset or the perfectionist mindset, as I call it, always looks at the last things that happened as a determinant of what's going on. What your number is in the bank account right now, that is your state. What your uh, weight is today, that is your state. Uh, how well you did in the last conversation versus whether somebody said to you, we need to talk, that is your state. When we think that way, first of all, we're thinking a little bit like children. It's very binary. It's bad or good. But the growth mindset in stark contrast accepts that we are a body in progress, that what I am quote unquote worth today is certainly no reflection over what I will be worth one year from now. I learned to understand that yesterday is chewed up old gum. It's lost all the flavor. Why am I even paying attention to it? It has absolutely no reflection. It matters not at all. It is diddly squat compared to what is coming. And when you start to understand that, you start to be opportunity oriented. You start to be possibility oriented. My TED talk, I gave a TED talk two years ago called You Don't Know What You Don't Know, is one of the transformative uh, solutions to what you're talking about, John. And that is to really start to recognize that Everything that's happened thus far has happened thus far, but it is not even a, a paltry reflection of what's still possible for you, what you can still learn around here. And when you ask yourself and ask, demand of yourself to open up, to level up your skill, to still ask more questions and to still aim for more, you're going to get it. That's amazing. I mean, I love Carol Dweck's mindset. And love. I've been preaching that to my son uh, about, you know, the, the good habits, bad habits, stop comparing, just trying to grow every single day and live present. Like we live for today and nothing in the past history. It's good to reflect and see if there's ways that we can improve, but it's already gone in the past, right? Like how do we forecast in terms of goal sessions and all the things that I'm learning is trying to, you know, share with the world, right? And I'm no expert. I'm just living by doing and I'm learning and I'm growing, and I'm still making tons of mistakes, but I'm okay with that okay. because it's not a race, it's a journey. And being opportunistic in life, right? To be healthier, to have stronger relationships, to be financially stable, right? To, to have choice, abundance. Mm -hmm. um, that's what it's all about, right? Constantly grow, trying to get better. But don't compare, I, I hardly compare to anyone. I don't, I don't, it doesn't bother me. It's a meant like I'm at a good state. We will always lose. Don't compare. There's always exactly. a 
somebody better than you. There's always going to be somebody old, younger than you. The arrogance that thinks that they can beat that is is crazy. It's madness. So just give it up. Enjoy your life. And You're have right. fun, have right? Fun. Yeah. Life is all about just happiness, kindness, being generous, being, you know, opportunist, right? And growing every single day. And awesome. gets you closer to these goals and whatever you, you have set. So I love this. Um, so what are, I know I'm going to come to the end very soon, uh, but Karen, what are some of the, some big pillars, some of the, if, if you had to tell one business owner that's thinking of uh, hiring you for a coach, yeah. what are some of the things that you look for in a successful gung-ho driven person yeah. to want to be working with someone like yourself? Absolutely. Well, I know uh, how to answer that question as I take all the superstars that I've coached through a similar trajectory. The first is get your mindset right. And for that, there's only one requisite, humility, yes. humility. By the way, I also believe this. I know a lot of people say perseverance is the bedrock of, of leadership. It is not, it is humility. And it's not humility as in, I won't brag on myself. It's the humility to know that you don't know what you don't know. It's the humility to know that you still have curiosity and the ability to learn around here. And without that coaching does not work. The know-it-all stance, is a skeptical stance. And it was, by the way, what prevented me from absorbing any coaching for a very long period of time. I knew that already. What could this woman, Jen Sincero, teach me? And it turns out she changed my life. So I'm really glad I showed up saying, I don't got this. I don't have the results I want. Can you help me? The second thing you look for is real follow through, a strong ability to follow through because um, words don't teach and I can't do the work for you. Coaching, unlike therapy, does involve a lot of active doing. You are not only engaged in actual homework through the process of coaching exercises, just like cognitive behavioral therapy, we rely on exercises, but you are actually expected to work with me on setting goals, establishing your priorities, reorganizing your organizational chart, really looking at your business plan, and then executing on that plan. Again, I will co-create it with you. I will ask you questions that may open your mind to new possibilities, but you got to do it. And the third is, I think a slight spiritual bent, not only curiosity and humility, but a real beginning of the understanding that there is something else going on here. And there's got to be a bigger reason to life than just going to work, paying the bills and keeping my weight down. Really, there has to be something bigger going on around here. And that thirst the real desire for the inner journey, for the unleashing of the of the soul has to be there as well. So that's usually what I'm looking for and what people should be prepared for, because I think coaching doesn't just get you your results. It gets you way more than you're asking for. It's a return to self, a return to love, which is truly freeing. And amazing final words um, and transformation, right? And it's all about making yourself live to that expectation that you've always wanted to live as well as you know just being happy at the end yeah. of the day like finding that true inner self of you um so what are some of the platforms um contacts that people can reach out to you karen because i i watch your ted talk i'm gonna have that link in this uh podcast as well but if someone wants to check you out check out some of the, the zoom meetings and some of the courses that you have and coaching sessions what's the best way to reach out to you the best way to check me out is karen that's karen with two e's so k-e-r-e-n-e-l-d-a-d.com They'll also, if they're interested in private or executive coaching or sessions for their team, can book a free consultation on the website and we'll be able to talk some more. The best other places to find me are Instagram at Coach Karen and the Coached Podcast, which I really hope, John, you'll join me on for the next season. Amazing. Well, I really want to thank you and I'm ultra grateful for this opportunity to speak with you. Um, I'm honored. I really had a lot of fun and that's what it's all about, right? Every day, making the most of every single situation, conversation, being present. And this is what I love about having conversations with great humans like yourself, Karen. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.